acceleration comes from a change in speed or a change in direction. But we can actually be a little bit more detailed when we think about acceleration causes either a change of speed or a change of direction. So for example, let's take a look at motion along some curved path. And for the specific case, we'll assume that the speed is constant throughout. And focus at the peak of this curve, you know, like right there. Okay. So remembering that acceleration in its full vector form is proportional to the change in velocity in its full vector form. And that proportionality is just divided by the time interval. Okay. Now, in the case of this constant speed, the only thing that's ch changing is the direction. So if I were to look at that point right there and carefully draw the velocity coming into that point and the velocity coming out of that point, well, it's going to be fairly, it's going to be symmetric. I have one coming in upward at an angle, and one coming out at an angle. Okay, and just, just for simplicity, I'm just going to label this initial and final. We'll know that these are velocity vectors. And so if I want to find the change in velocity, final minus initial, I reverse this one and then add it to the tip of this one, which gives me a vector that points that way. So here's my negative initial, and this is my change right there. That's my change in velocity, which again, besides the scaling from time, is gives the direction um, of the acceleration. So that acceleration is pointing straight down at this peak where the curve is uh, at, its, at its highest spot. Okay. If we focus further in and, and zoom in and try and get to that spot directly, we could basically zoom in on this picture and we'd get the same thing until we're basically nearly horizontal coming in and nearly horizontal coming out. Okay. Now the time period for this would be much smaller than the time period for this. Okay. But if we draw our negative i, so here's i, here's f, here's negative i, we still get a downward thing. Now as we get closer and closer, as we make delta t smaller and smaller and smaller surrounding that top point, um, it, it may look like this vector is getting smaller and smaller as the acceleration is going to zero, but remember that's delta v and we're dividing it by an equally smaller, smaller, smaller time. So the actual value of this acceleration um, won't be, uh, you know, won't, won't uh, get smaller, it'll stay the same. But the important thing here is as we get zoom in in time, we're zooming in in time, the, these two vectors are becoming more and more horizontal. They pretty much are getting tangent to that top curve, and our acceleration is straight down, which means that in this case, our acceleration, for the case of this uh, uh, unchanging speed, our acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity. It's perpendicular to the velocity. Okay, so this, um, so my notation here is saying that the acceleration is perpendicular to velocity, and so in the case of unchanging speed, the only acceleration we have is perpendicular. So we can take that idea with previous ideas and say that our accelerations, our full vector acceleration, can be broken up into a part that is parallel to the motion and a part that is perpendicular to the motion. Okay? The perpendicular part changes direction only. And the parallel part is what makes it actually speed up or slow down. This is our traditional acceleration that we think of. So this is changing the speed. That becomes a very powerful idea. When we plug it back into here, we can get our final velocity as a vector is equal to our initial velocity as a vector plus our acceleration times our time period. And so now I can talk about, well, the velocity final is broken up into two pieces, and this is broken up into two pieces. 
but I can now break this into a parallel and perpendicular conceptually and say is it speeding up or is it just changing direction is this the same size as this one or is it is it uh, sorry is it the same size and but just changing direction or is this actually bigger and also changing direction or not and so we now can use our uh, tighter definition of acceleration to focus on the speed changing part, the parallel acceleration, and the direction changing part.